We want to thank, thank everybody for being here. Thank you for being with us out in the cyber world. We appreciate everybody being here. Uh, we're down a little bit. There's been a lot of sickness going on, and uh, we're, we're going to worship God just the same. Amen. The scripture says, for two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. Yes. So God has enthroned himself already here. Yes. God is here, and that means there's uh, 10,000 times 10,000, thousand, thousand of angels that's around about him, ready to worship and praise. All we got to do is jump in with yes. All we got to do. So we, we are going to jump in and worship and praise the Lord uh, with the angels all over and just and to enjoy ourselves in the presence of God. And we just want to magnify him. Uh, do we, do we have any prayer requests? Other than what I got in my hand. We, I, they, uh, they gave me a list of the prayer requests and uh, we're gonna we're gonna pray for these right now and, and just lift up these names before the Lord, for He is all that we need. He's all that we need. Uh, and if I go any further, I won't have to do my message because that's part of it. So we will we'll leave it there. Uh, let's go before the Lord and pray pray for thee, Father. We exalt you today, magnifying the name of Jesus, for you are worthy of all praise, Father. And you have set yourself up. And you have you have. Bound yourself up but by your own word. Lord, and you can't do nothing but your word. And Father, so we, we <coughs> remind you as in Psalms 119, uh, remember the words that you have spoken to your servant that cause me to hope. So Father, we speak these names out now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we have the hope in you. Lord, that he is in your wings. Father, we lift up Sister Jane to you. We, we pray for her. Lord, and we pray right now that the peace of God and the strength come upon her body. Lord, that she'll walk in the power of who you are. We magnify you. We pray for uh, Pastor Nathan, Lord, uh, that is uh, under the weather. Lord, we speak a power in him. We speak a healing in him, Lord, that like he's never felt before. Lord, let it rise, raise him up, Father God, and, and be stronger now than he's ever been in his life. We pray for Brother Al. He also is down and sick, and we pray right now. Lord, if we come against the, the, uh, the spirits that would cause sickness and disease in this church, we speak against that now in the name of Jesus, and we rebuke every assignment that the devil would put upon this body. Lord, and we cast that demon out in Jesus' name, and we speak healing in, the, in that place. Same way with Brother Woody. And, uh, Father, we lift, lift him up to you, Father God. Uh, the assignment against him and his family has, uh, has been uh, negated and, and canceled. Lord, and now it's only peace and joy in that house. We give you glory and praise. Father, we lift up Richard Dean to you. Father, you, we ask, Lord, that peace and joy uh, flood, flood into him. Lord, and that he will uh, reach up and touch you, Father God, for in you is his peace. We we'll glorify you. For the Holder family, we pray. Uh, Lord, that, that they too will know the power of your peace and your joy. We pray, Father, for strength uh, through all their trials and tribulations, Lord, that they will know that you are amongst them and in their midst. We pray for Sarah Clark. We lift her up, Father God, in Jesus' name, that the power of healing, that the power of, of your presence being Father, when we're in your presence, there is no sickness. In your presence, Father God, there's healing and joy. There's no lack and no want. There's no sickness and disease in your presence. So, Father, we ask now, let us be in your presence continually. We pray for Shelly and her family. Lord, that the power of your spirit will be upon her. Father, that she too will walk in the power of your presence and in the joy of your of the Lord and will give you glory and praise the Lord. Now we ask, Father God, that you join us into this. Father, with, with your spirit, lift us up, Father, in your presence, and we'll give you the glory and honor for it all. We invite your Holy Spirit to be manifested in this place, Lord, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, which one are you? Which one y'all singing first? We're all singing. I thought we're all singing together, aren't we? Yeah, but which yeah. one are we going first? I fly away. I fly away. Okay, get us started. Come on, girls. We're playing. We're singing. I'll fly away. You're going up there. These two girls are going to sing and they are amazing where they come from. Uh, their voices have have meld together, and it's just an amazing thing. And I am enjoying it hearing them sing. Is it Thank you. All right. Oh, oh, my phone, girls. Can you grab my phone? I get it. <clears throat> Oh, 
When you have it, say amen. Amen. And stand with me. Let's read the Word of God. This is His Word. We honor His Word. Read it. Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I, pleased, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities, in reproach, in knees, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. And when I am weak, then I am strong. Father, we magnify you, glorify you, and honor you. We praise you. Father, open up our eyes that we may see, Lord, that we may receive the truth of your word. And we honor you for it. Do it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all may be seated. Here in the last year and a half, two years, uh, we have seen tremendous growth in, in this body, not only in numbers, <coughs> but in spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. And it has, it has uh, uh, really blessed my heart how people have grown in, in the spirit, how they've grown in their word, how they, they've grown in, in their personalities that in this church. And it's just an amazing thing what we have seen and what we have witnessed over, uh, over the, the year, year and a half, two years that we, that we, have, we have seen this uh, magnificent growth. Uh, and this, this growth has led us uh, to, like, 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 I, like I was saying, the, the personal Bible study, home Bible studies, and people gathered together and, and studying scriptures and, and uh, talking about the scripture. Uh, the discipleship program that, that we've got, uh, we come together and, and the, the questions that have been uh, brought there, the, the thought-filled, not thoughtful, but thought-filled questions that have been brought to the, to the discipleship uh, study program and, and uh, the answers that we discuss and come, come with. It, it's been amazing to see the growth that's been going on in the, in the people of this church. It's, it's an amazing thing. But I, I'm telling you, there, there, is, there is things that we need to understand more about, about not only physical growth, but spiritual growth. It's been several years ago. Uh, I, was, I was reading... Uh, a magazine. It, it had a, a program in there about bodybuilding, uh, muscle growth, and this thing, and this program uh, said that it guaranteed sixty percent muscle mass growth in three months. Hmm. And I told Ruth, "Oh, I'd like to try that. I'd like to try that." You know, and, but it cost one hundred fifty dollars. I knew we didn't have one hundred fifty dollars. I, I knew that, so I just kind of let it go. I just kind of let it out of my mind. But little did I know that Ruth started saving money and putting money back. And Christmas, she laid this thing in my lap. And well, okay, what is it? I opened it up, and there's that $150 program, <laughs> bodybuilding program. And so I, I, I'm thinking, my, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, she spent $150 on this thing. I, I can do this like I do most every other thing that I want to try do it a few, few times or do it a few weeks and then set it aside and then worry about it again. But I'm thinking, no, she got $150 in this thing. I got to. So I committed in my heart to do this. I committed in my heart. And, and I started, uh, we wa I watched the video. It had a video on, on the program, the exercises you're supposed to do and all this. It came with a, a, a battery of, of, of supplements, vitamin supplements and, and mineral supplements that you were to take a certain time of the days, and, and uh, it had a, uh, a menu of what you're supposed to eat, and I committed myself to do this. Now, I worked at Lowe's Aluminum at the time, and uh, I had to be at work, when I was working day shift, I had to be at work at 7 o'clock. And they suggested in this program that you work, you work out early in the morning. You do that first thing when you get up is do these exercises. So I, I said, okay. If I've got to be there at 7, then anyway, I had to be at, at the workout Sunday. So they love got a little, little uh, workout area. And I said, so I had to be there. I had to be there at 4 o'clock. So I'd get up, 
and I get my stuff together, I get my workout clothes on, and I get my work clothes together, and I would go down there, and I'd be there at four o'clock, and I start work out. I'd work out from two and a half, three hours uh, a day. I work out six and seven days a week. On Saturday, on the weekends, I didn't go in quite as early, but I would go in and I'd work out uh, six and seven days a week. And after a while, uh, um, well, when I first started out. I was doing bench press. Now, uh, you, it's, it's dangerous to do uh, 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 bench press with a bar. It's, that's just dangerous. When you're by yourself, let me tell you, 4 o'clock in the morning, ain't nobody at the gym. <laughs> ain't nobody there but the idiots, and I was the only one there. So I felt in, I feel in there. But but it's dangerous to do dumbbell, barbell with bench press with, by yourself. So I would do dumbbells. And I started out, when I first started out, I was doing 20-pound dumbbells in each hand, doing big press. And then I, I, it got to the point, I couldn't hardly pull, I couldn't hardly push that 20 pounds up. I was embarrassed. 20 pounds, I couldn't even do and, and I would get so sore. My, I couldn't even, I couldn't even wash my hair, my arm got so sore. I, I couldn't hardly get out of the bed in the mornings. I'd get up every morning, go down there, and I'd work out. But after a while, the guys I was working with, they could see the difference in me. My clothes fit different. My, my, my body was tightening up. I, I began to, uh, the mass, the muscle mass started to show. And after three, now I didn't get 60%. They, they, because I couldn't follow their program perfectly. I, so, but I got pretty good size. I was doing, uh, at the end of it, I was doing 60-pound dumbbell presses. I, I, I could see the growth in me. But, that, but it was all about the resistance. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do muscle growth without resistance. Whatever, whatever, you want, whatever you're doing, if you're going to train or, or increase your strength, you've got to have resistance against those muscles. We have been growing in this church spiritually. Mm -hmm. And because of that spiritual growth in this church, the devil has brought resistance against us. Amen. There has, there has things been coming into this body that you, we see a little, one at a time. Uh, the families in this church have been suffering and portraying trials and tribulations and that's come against the body. And let me tell you something. We're, we're no better than Paul. Paul, let me, let, me, let me read something. I didn't put this over there. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to read it real quick. You don't have to keep up with it. In, in uh, 12 1, it says, uh, it is doubtless not profitable me to be boast. I will come to come to the visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heavens. Now, we understand, we go ahead and bring the rest of this, we understand that Paul is talking about himself. He said, I had a revelation from God. And this revelation, God took me up into the third heavens. Fourteen years ago, he took me up into the third heavens. And he saw things. He said, I can't tell you what I saw. I can't even write these things down. It's not, it's not uh, permissible for me to do that. But, but the revelation that God, uh, that God had given to Paul had exalted him up in, in itself. That, God, that Paul had an opportunity to get boastful, get proud. He, he had grown so spiritually strong in, in his, not only in his uh, uh, ministry, but in his mind, but what he knows from God, that, that the devil, that, now let me tell you, that this thorn in the flesh that we read earlier, this thorn in the flesh, God didn't give that to him, but he allowed the devil to do it. He allowed the devil to put this thorn in Paul's flesh uh, to, to, to keep him. Paul, let me tell you something. It's not about who you are, it's about who I am. Let, let, me, let me read it, because we, we're going we're gonna to look at something here that that, uh, uh, that God showed me, and I, I, you, you, you have to see this. It said, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. So Paul is saying, the revelation that I told you about in the first of this, cha this chapter, he said, if I, I could be exalted in my mind, I could be exalted... Uh, on what God had, had shown me, I could be exalted in that place. But God, but let me go ahead. Is it, uh, 
A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. God allowed Satan to torment Paul to the point that he kept him humble in this thing. Lord, I, 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 let me let me let me give you some give you some more experience, and, and I I'm gonna get out of my sink here, so y'all forgive me. Um, the word in there, the, the word is thorn. Let me turn my page. The word thorn, um, the, the word messenger, if he says in there that God said, or the devil uh, sent a messenger of Satan to bless me, the word messenger is angelos. It means messenger, angel, or one sent. Angelos. It, it's in one who sent. So th this thorn in the flesh was an was a, a angel or a, a satanic angel or a satanic messenger from Satan to, to come and buffet a palm. Now, the word uh, thorn, and there it says it says a thorn in the flesh, a uh, school loss, it means a stake as used to hold down tents. It, when he, the King James says it's a thorn. Now, we, we, I, I get in my mind a rose thorn. I don't know what you got. <laughs> Ruth thinks about the big thorns that they put in Christ's head when she read it. I thought about the little, little, a little rose thorns. You get them in your fingers, you can't hardly get them things out, and they torment you. And Paul is saying, I got this thing in my in my flesh, in my side, and it's tormenting me. But he wasn't talking about a little bit of thorn. He said, This thing is hurting me like a like a tent stake driven in my flesh. Now think about this. This messenger of Satan has created such a torment in Paul that he is being tormented with this thing. And the word buffet. And I'm not going to try the, the Greek on it, but it signifies being struck with a clenched fist. And, and one of the theologians I read, it said it's like being punched in the kidney mm. over and over and over again. Paul said that this messenger has come and he's beaten me in the kidneys and I can't do nothing about it. I got this, this constant torment in my body. Uh, uh, Assuming that it's in the body. He said, it's like somebody punching me in my kidneys constantly. He said, I went to the Lord three times for this. Lord, remove this thing from me. Take this thing away from me. Now, the, the messenger, what this was, this torment, that you can get, you read the theologians, you read all of you can get a hundred different uh, ideas of what, what this thing was. Uh, personally, I think that it was a messenger of Satan that was going ahead of him in the, into the towns that he was going to preach in. And he was stirring up the demons and the devils there. And by the time Paul got there, the whole town was upset and up in a roar and ready to, for Paul to come in. He, how many times was he stoned? How many times was he beaten? How many times was he thrown in jail? How many times? Simply because this messenger had went in ahead of him in the, in the towns ahead of him and stirred the people up, stirred the demons up there. And, and you know that the, that Paul wore the scars of, of these beatings. He wore the scars of these stonings. You you know he wore all these these scars. And he, it, you could see the, the anguish on his face because no, everywhere he went, he had been tormented by this, by this messenger. Everywhere he went. So he, here he is. Here he is. He went to the Lord. and he, Let me read. That's, uh, man, verse 8, I think it is. Verse 8, it says, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might, be, that it might depart from me. Three times he went to the Lord. That, Lord, take this thing away from me. Stop this. Stop this thing. And, and here's the answer. Verse 9. And he said to me, he said to me, the Lord spoke to him and said to him. Let me, in the Greek, the, this phrase, he said to me, has finality to it. I'm saying what, it it's what God said was this. Paul, don't ask me again. Don't come to me again with this problem. Don't talk to me about this anymore. I, I, I've answered this. I've given you an answer. And don't come to me no more with it. It's, it's a finality to what he was saying to the point that, that it had to settle it in Paul's heart about the answer that he gave. Look, look what the answer was. Uh, therefore, I rather... Uh, now, I'm... I'm 
It didn't print my, my thing out, I'm sorry. Uh, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. The, this grace that is sufficient, this grace, and that we understand uh, that the grace is, is the word grace, uh, kuros, is uh, unmerited favor. It's a gift given to us we didn't deserve. Mm -hmm. That's grace. That's the biblical definition of grace. Mm -hmm. Grace is, is God doing for, for us and we didn't deserve it. God blessed us, we didn't deserve it. Amen. Right. God has, has healed us, we didn't deserve it. Yeah. God has saved us, and we didn't deserve it. It's grace. It's grace that's done this. So what we have to look at, at this as, as he says, my grace, my unmerited favor to you is sufficient for thee. Now, I'm going to look, look at the word sufficient. The word sufficient is akio, akio. It primarily signifies, now you, you got to get this, because this is the, the crook, this is the, the, the hook of everything that he, he's showing me. The primary, uh, uh, su uh, sufficient is primarily signified to be sufficient, to be possessed, to be possessed of sufficient strength, to be strong, to be enough for a thing, hence to defend, ward off, to satisfy, contend with. Now you, did y'all get that? No? You look at me like deer in headlight. Okay. He, the word sufficient in, in this context means that to possess sufficient strength. If you're going to be sufficient, then you have to possess the strength to, be, to, to do that. It means to have enough to defend off, to war off, to contend with. Okay? All right, look, look, I'm going I'm to give you some uh, grace words here. Grace scriptures. In Ephesians 2.5, we're talking about the word grace. In Ephesians 2.5, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, hath quickened us with Christ, by grace ye are saved. That's what grace is. Right. Amen. Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Uh, what I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to lead you up to a definition of grace that I like. The Bible, the biblical definition is good. But I'm going to give you one that I like. Who, uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This purpose in our life was the grace God called us with. Uh, Titus 2.11 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This grace has appeared to us and brought us salvation. Look, look at Titus 3.7 That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of hope of eternal life. We are justified by grace. In uh, Hebrews 10, 29, of how much sore punishment suppose ye should be, should he be though thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he sanctified an unholy thing and had done this, had and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. So the, so he's now calling the God's Holy Spirit grace. His Holy Spirit now is taking on the, the uh, uh, manifestation of God's grace itself. Now, all of these scriptures lead up to this definition here. God's power working in us, doing what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. Now, according to the scriptures, we can't save ourselves. Salvation comes through grace, not of our works, but by grace, God's work. So it's God working in me, bringing his grace in me to bring me to salvation. Amen. God's power working in me, doing in me what I cannot do for myself. That's right. So we have this definition of grace. We have this definition of, of, uh, of su sufficient, sufficient, uh, 
submission. So we understand that, that this grace, this Holy Spirit. Now let me let me go back to uh, let me go back to number nine. <clears throat> he said, and he said to me, My grace, my Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit, my presence, my presence is sufficient, is enough for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, I want to, I want you to look at something. Go to Genesis 7, 17, 1. If I put it in there. Um, when Abraham, Abraham was 90 years old, was, was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham, Abram, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk with me and be thou perfect. The Lord, the word, the Lord Himself, He said, I am the Almighty God. The Lord Himself called Himself El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. El Shaddai. God Almighty. Amen. Mm -hmm. He called Himself God Almighty. The name or the word Shaddai means all such sufficient one. Mm -hmm. The one when Paul, when God spoke to Paul in this chapter and he said, my grace is sufficient for you, he was alluding to what he would call himself in the Old Testament. He was alluding to the fact that he said, I am El Shaddai. I am the all-sufficient one. Amen. And he said, my grace, my presence, my Holy Spirit is enough, <clears throat> is enough, and I am... Uh, El Shaddai for you. You don't need nothing else. Right. Paul, you don't need nothing else in your life. Whatever is going on in your life, you don't need nothing else but right. El Shaddai in That's your right. life. That's right. That's all you need. Now, the, the question is this. What's going in, on in your life? What's going on in your life? That, that God can stand up and say, let me tell you something. You don't need nothing else but El Shaddai in your Amen. life. You don't need nothing but El Shaddai, the grace of God, being manifested in your life through His sufficiency that is all in Him. Amen. You don't need nothing else. That's right. It doesn't matter what goes on, no matter what trial, tribulation, or problem, or, or infirmity has come upon you, you don't need nothing else but the El Shaddai that is God. Amen. You don't need nothing else. So he was telling Paul, and, and let me tell you something, Paul recognized what he was saying. Paul was a student of the Old Testament, of the Torah. He, he was a student that when, when he said, I am sufficient, he knew exactly, oh, he's El Shaddai. Amen. And that's the reason Paul can go ahead in the last part of, of 9 and 10 and said, I, I'm, I'm good right where I am because I've got the all-sufficient one with me continually. Amen. Amen. I'm so far ahead of my notes. See, we have grown so much in this church. We have grown uh, leaps and bounds in our in our spirituality. We have grown leaps and bounds in our in our understanding and, and our wisdom of God. I mean, we're a long, long way from where we need to be, but we're growing a whole lot more than it was two years ago. Right. And what makes us think for a minute? That that because we have we have gained this this revelation of who God is, as as minute as it is, we are learning and having a revelation of God every time we come in here. Amen. Every time we come together for a Bible study or discipleship, we're getting a revelation of who God is. Mm -hmm. And because of that revelation, the devil says, Hey, I got a thorn for your flesh. Yep. What makes you think that, that we are above that? If Paul had to have one, what makes you think you're going to get away without one? Amen. So we all have, in a way, one way or another, we have our own thorns in the flesh. We all have our own uh, messengers from Satan to buffet us that beat us in the kidneys one day, every day of our life, one way or another. Yep. And with that, with that messenger of Satan being buffeted us, <clears throat> we can cry out, to God, Lord, just take this away from us. And he tells us the same thing that he told Paul. Don't ask me again because I have given you the answer. And that answer is, I am El Shaddai for you and you don't need nothing else. Amen. You don't need nothing else. I am El Shaddai. Don't ask me for nothing else. That's right. So God said, because 
because of my presence with you, because I am El Shaddai, if you allow me to be the all-sufficient one in your life, because I am dead in you, and when you become weak, I become strong. Amen. Let me, let me, let me, let me explain this to you. Paul goes on, in the scripture uh, calls it infirmities. In, uh, in chapter, in verse 10, um, no, in verse 9, it says, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Now, the word infirmities here it is not relating to sickness or disease. It's, it's literally talking about being beat down and, and uh, uh, overpowered in, a, in our daily walk. This is what that infirmities is reflect, referring to. Now, it can mean sickness and disease uh, in, in, in a context. But way Paul's talking here, it's not talking about sickness and disease. It's talking about being beat down and, and wore down and feel like you carry the load of the world on your shoulders. And God says, let me tell you something. I'm more than sufficient Amen. for you and any for infirmities that right. come upon you. That's my power in you. So Paul says, when I feel that my weakest, when I am the weakest in my spirit, when I'm weakest, God is strong in me. God now says, oh, let me take this load. The, the El Shaddai of God rises up in, within, within us, and he takes over that load. But it's only when we become our weakest and understand we can't carry this load. That's right. Paul will say, Paul will say Lord, take this thing away from me. I, I beg three times, I beg, please take this thing away from me. And he said, Paul, I am El Shaddai, and I'll take that load if you allow me to do it. And Paul said, oh, when I realize that I'm not standing in my, in my weakness, but I'm standing in my pride. I mean, you take something on on yourself. If you're trying to carry the load of the problem, the trial, and the tribulation in your life, you're trying to carry that on you. That's pride. That is absolute pride. God said, to cast your burdens upon me uh, and, and take my, my burden for mine is life. If, you do, if we don't do that, it's pride. Amen. And pride is as witchcraft and it's sin in our life. And we try to carry this load on our own. God said, I can't stand up and be strengthened you because you're trying to do it in your own strength. Amen. And Paul said, Lord, you take this thing over because when I'm at my weakest, you're the strongest Amen. in me. Amen. I become strong in, in myself through him, not in my own power and in my own strength. He becomes my power. He becomes my strength. And then we can truly stand up and say, God is my El Shaddai. He is my ever-present God. He is the, the strength that I need. He's everything I need, and I don't need nothing else. Amen. And that's exactly what Paul, what God was telling Paul. Paul, you don't need nothing else. And that's the reason that Paul could go on in, 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 the, in the scriptures and say, said, it doesn't matter what comes. If, if, let me read verse 10. It says, therefore, you, I'm going to wait on you. You got it? All right, read it. Anyway. Therefore, I take pleasure in, in infirmities, in, in reproach, in needs, in persecution, in distress. All of the things that Paul was, ex was, was experiencing when he was going into these towns and these villages and the, and the hornet's nests of demons were stirred up on him. All of this stuff was coming upon him and he was trying to pack all that on himself. He was trying to catch all that and carry that weight by himself. And God said, you don't have to do this by yourself, Paul. Let my strength, the El Shaddai, rise up in you and I'll be strong in you. And Paul said, okay, okay, from now on when I go in there and these things are stirred up on me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collapse under the weight of them and let you pack it for a while. Yeah. See, we, he's telling us, us to do the very same thing. We are to, to surrender the weight and the guilt and the and the troubles that we have and let God pack these things. It's not for us to carry this trial and tribulation. It's not to, for us to carry the, the thing that the devil has put upon us to punish us, the pounding in our kidneys. Has anybody ever had a kidney shot? Oh, I mean, my brother used to wear me out when we were kids. I mean, he would just, he would wear, he'd get me in a headlock and just pound me good. I know what it is to take a kidney shot. And that hurts and it, it not, when he quits, it still hurts. And the devil is trying to punch us and, and pound us in our kidneys so that we will be defeated before him and not let God carry the weight of our troubles and trials. 
And God said, it's not for you to do. It's not for you to carry. It's not for you to pack. It's not for you to, to carry on your own. Let me have this thing. Let me do this. He goes on and said, my power, uh, in verse 9, it says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And the Lord continues, my power. Who is my, who is he referring to? When he says, uh, uh, in verse 9, he says, uh, verse 9, and when he says in verse 9, uh, my strength is made perfect in weakness, therefore, uh, it, my strength, who's he referring to with my strength? Who's, who's, he, come on, who's he referring to? El Shaddai. He's referring back to that. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient. Who's, who is sufficient? El Shaddai. My strength. Who? El Shaddai is made perfect in weakness. El Shaddai is made perfect in our weakness so that he becomes stronger in us. Amen. So he, he's referring to himself, El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. And he's made complete. The word complete there is asathena. It means the want of strength, weakness, indicating inability to produce results. Think about that. The inability to produce results. We're trying to carry all this trial and tribulation ourselves. We're trying to carry the weight of all this ourselves. And we ain't producing nothing. Our bodies, our mind, our spirits are not strong enough to produce a, the results that we're looking for. It's not there. And because of that, God said, if you'll let me do that, I will produce the, the answers and the results that you need because El Shaddai is more than enough. Amen. He is more than enough. So we, we're looking for the results. We're looking for these things. That the power of God working in us, doing what we cannot do for ourselves, when we cannot produce the results we want, El Shaddai is there and his power is, is growing stronger in us as we under, understand, you can understand that we cannot do this on ourselves. His power grows stronger in us when we realize, I can't do this in myself. I want to, I want to be able to pack this. I want to be able to carry this load. I want, I want to solve. I, 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 I've even uh, come, come to the point in my, when I was much younger, uh, get in a trial and say, Lord, if you'll get me out of this and I'll take care of the next one on my own. Uh, how stupid that was, you know. But, you know, you're, you're a baby in Christ, you're growing. And, 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 and God said, you don't have to carry this one or none of the other. Amen. If you'll let me take care of it, if you'll let El Shaddai be God in you that you need, then the, the results you need will be produced because I produced it, not you. Amen. I have never been able to produce anything good. It's just not in me to do it. It's not in you to do it. All the good that I've ever done in my life is because God manifested himself in me at times. And I give God glory for that. Amen. So the question is this. What trial, tribulation, problem is going on in your life that you're trying to carry? What, what troubles and trials are you packing that you need to turn over to God and let him take care of? Then let him be the all-sufficient one in your life. There's no trial and tribulation that God can't handle. There's no trial and tribulation that God can't take care of. There's nothing that God can't do in your life if you'll if you let him do it so that his all-power, uh, all-sufficient one in, in us be manifested in us doing what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. That grace of God working in us, doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. That produces the right uh, product that we want, the results that we're looking for. It's all in Him. Amen. We need to trust Him and, and put it in His hand. Now let me tell you something, that's not easy. That's not easy to do. I know in, in myself, I want to fix it. I want to do this. My, my wife will come up and say, Gary, I, 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 I'm hurting. I, I, I can't do that. I, I, it, it hurts me. and it, it, it hurts all day. I want to be able to say, okay, let me fix this for you. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. I'll drop a nail in it, put a screw in it, and, and some glue and a little, little finish over it, and it'll be good. And I can't do that. And it hurts me because of that. But I, now I understand that if we turn around and she said, Gary, I, I, I don't feel good. This hurts. And, and, and I, need, I need this. We can, now we can go to El Shaddai. 
Lord, there's a problem and a trial and tribulation has come upon my life. And we turn this all over to you because we know that when we're at our weakest, you're, at, you're the strongest in us. And the best result that we're going to get is through El Shaddai. Amen. And that's what we need to be right now. That's what we need to be. If you've got a trial and tribulation in your life, if there's trouble in your life, there's something going on in your, in your marriage, in your family, or in, or in your body, and you, and you try to carry this weight on yourself, it's not for you to pack. It's for El Shaddai to carry. He wants it. Paul, don't ask me again, because I have produced something for you to take care of that. El Shaddai will pack, take care of every, all your problems. And Paul says, even in my infirmities, even in the trials, tribulation that comes, no matter what, what the world brings on, I know that when I am weak, he is strong. When I am weak, he is strong in me. And we give God glory for that. Say with us, go before the Lord. Father, we exalt you today. Holy is your name and worthy of all praise. And we're, right now, Father God, we, we lift up your name and glorify you. And Father, every one of us here, there's no one here and there's no one in, in the cyber world right now that doesn't have a problem, that doesn't have a trial, that doesn't have a tribulation. The, the devil has come against us one way or another. Lord, and we now, we call upon the El Shaddai. We call upon El Shaddai to take our troubles, trials, and tribulations, work in us, doing in us what we cannot do for ourselves, that we may, that you may produce through us the right results that we need in our life. Father God, and we surrender right now to you, that you may do in us what we cannot do for ourselves. We surrender that trial, we surrender that trouble, we surrender it to you, Lord, that you may be glorified in, in us. Lord, let, the, let people see you in our face. Let people see uh, you in our countenance. Lord, that people can say, I, there's something different about you. There's something different about you. And I want what you got, Lord, so that we can go into the world and we can praise God in you, Father God. Through El Shaddai, we can carry any love. We praise you and we give you glory, Father God. We honor you, Father, for you are worthy. We give you praise. Thank you, Father God. Anybody out there in, in the, that's watching us on YouTube and, and Facebook, if you have a trial and tribulation, and you need yeah. prayer, need us to pray for you, text us. Let us know what it is. And, and the, this church family will pray for you. And we'll call upon El Shaddai for you and give God glory for the answer. It's already yours, and it's in you through El Shaddai. Amen. We praise God for you. We thank you for being with us. And God may God bless you. Amen.